is Dan O'Sullivan from AdvancedAngler.com, and I want to welcome you to our first episode of The Advanced Angler. We're here on our home lake. Uh, it's uh, Neely Henry on the Coosa River, and what we decided to do this year is a little different than something we've done in the past, is uh, we've tried to keep ourselves behind the scenes, but with coming to a new area, we moved, to Cal we moved from California to Alabama, I realized that I'm going to learn a whole new style of fishing. Uh, I'm going to have to learn new waters, new water clarities, techniques, all those kinds of things. So one of the best things that we thought we could do was be a guinea pig. And all of the stuff that we've learned over the years from the elite and FLW Tour pros uh, gives us the opportunity to kind of put some of that into perspective and or put some of that to use. And what we've tried to do in the past was just keep us behind the scenes and let you communicate directly or learn directly from the pros. Well, we're going to kind of exhibit that in our series called The Advanced Angler, and uh, we kind of feel like we're going to be guinea pigs. So here's the layout. We're on Neely Henry. We launched at Rainbow Landing this morning in Rainbow City, between Rainbow City and Southside. And we've just come up, we found a pocket, and this, this area is kind of the first shallow water bay looks like a spawning area and as you can see there's a bunch of docks around behind us and we're going to go ahead and we're going to give it a try we've got some stuff we've got buzzing toads we've got uh you know flipping baits um we got swim baits a couple of swim baits um we got and then we've got uh, a frog a chatter bait and then uh davis uh bait company swim jig here and uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going try to try to put something together here today in the shallow water. We think the fish might be still in the spawn. Um, I haven't checked all the conditions yet, but I will tell you this. We've had a bunch of rains around here. The water's dirty. There's actually two turbines running uh, at, Weiss, at the Weiss Lake Dam. And there's three turbines running at the Logan Martin Dam, the bottom of, of Neely Henry. So there's a lot of current going through the system right now. But we're going to just start in this little pocket and uh, kind of talk our way through it as we go and try to figure out if we can help you learn something while we're being guinea pigs. So you're going to get the good, the bad, and the ugly here on the Advanced Angler. One of the first things guys that I realized when I got here was how different water clarity was being from the west largely the uh, water clarity was what I would call clear you had uh, often six foot or more of visibility and um, I was here on the uh, Tennessee River at Pickwick for a TH Marine media event, and uh, I was with Wesley Strader, and we were my first one. Okay, this is not a big one, but it tells me something. <laughs> Let me explain and show you real quick before I get back to my story. Okay, it's not a big fish, but it's a start. Okay, I threw... Uh, I have to get the pliers on that one. I threw this up right into that corner up there. If you can see that corner right up by the dock. And I barely barely got it moving. I just dropped my power pole so we can kind of stay in the area. I had barely gotten it moving and the jig just disappeared. So it's a little male, a little largemouth. 
but I've got Davis Bay Company jig, his uh, original swim jig, and a glimmer blue color with a what's become one of my favorite jig trailers, Strike King Menace Grub, in a in a blue smoke color here, a blue shad kind of a deal. But the fish just took it. I didn't feel a thing. The jig just disappeared. I didn't see a flash. I didn't see anything. The jig just, the jig just disappeared. Couldn't catch up to it. So, number one. All right, let me get back to my story. Um, I was with Wesley Strader. We were on Pickwick at the TH Marine Media event. And uh, I was watching him throw a crankbait. And he was throwing one of his handmaids that's now a product. And I don't remember the company, but anyway. Uh, Wesley makes his own or used to make his own crankbaits and, and I was watching this sexy shad colored crankbait come through the water and the water was a little dirtier than this and if you can see the lure this is a blue glimmer whitish jig I just now can't barely see it and that's it was a little dirtier than that or maybe it was about the same but I couldn't see the jig in two feet of water I, his crankbait. I couldn't see it in two foot of water. So I uh, finally asked him, wondering why he was throwing that color crankbait in, in such dirty water, and this was my perspective. And So I asked him, why do you throw a crank, that color crankbait in this water color? And he said, I always throw this color crankbait in water this clear. And I went, huh? Well, my perspective was clear water is what? So is, is, is clear. I mean, you can see in it. Uh, I learned real quick that there's a different perspective to some of these things and uh, so where I would normally throw probably chartreuse in that color water I needed to throw something different so it's a different perspective things I got to learn okay so that first fish told me this they're shallow probably because of a little bit dirtier water that's been coming down the system but there's also these water willow things that you can kind of see in those pockets back there around the corners. So what we're going to assume to start with is that the fish are up there shallow in the water willows. So we'll try start with that presumption right there and uh, work our way through that. I'm trying to keep a, the jig up just on the surface, or just, just where I can barely see it. And I'm shaking the rod tip to give it some action. It keeps it slow. Um, and I'm going to try to hit all these little color, these little areas where uh, a fish might come out of here. The other thing was that one was on the shady side of a dock. So that's something I'm going to have to look at there too and pay attention to that. You want to try to, you want to try to take as much mental notes out of each fish strike as you can because that's what's going to tell you help you put the whole puzzle together for anglers who want it all the new hds3 a revolutionary step forward in simultaneous chirp sonar and structure scan hd sonar imaging clearer views faster interface multi-touch screen key pan operation and total boat control plus with versatile networking and go free wireless sync of maps software and apps hds3 is the ultimate fish finding system find navigate dominate with lorance
Oh, I just missed one. Okay, so that one came when I jerked the rod a little bit. <laughs> I turned the hydro wave on a minute ago and uh, I almost immediately noticed, well, as I've turned it on, I've noticed a lot more bait fish activity here. A lot more bait fish activity. I'm starting to see things chasing now. I'm going to go to a little bigger uh, profile trailer. I'm going to put a rage craw on. A white rage craw. See if that little larger profile can make a difference. There we go, little one, but, okay. Again, back into the corner back there by the, um, the corner of that dock. Little tiny male, he's afraid to come out. But, right in the corner of that dock, see there's some, there's some rocks right here, if you can see them. There's some rocks off of this thing that kind of make a little, uh, I guess for lack of a better word, a little underwater point. And they're just something different on this bank right here that held that fish. And it's just a little one, but I just saw the line go sideways. And when I couldn't feel the jig anymore, I knew it was a fish. A lot of times on a swim jig, you'll actually see the strike because your jig will go bye-bye. Okay, I see more of those rocks up here. So that looks like it might be another spot that might hold a fish or two. Oops. Overrun. We're going to try the little toady majigger here.
I just got bit again. That one didn't take the whole thing. But he took the claw off my ray truck. He's hampered now. Took both of them. Oh no. Poor baby. Guess we get another one out. <laughs> I went right back to it after changing my little bug, my little creature, on the back of this Davis Bait Swim Jig, and that one is hungry. See, they're small, but uh, they're fun. They were really tight. Not bad. What was that? Do you see that? See what? Creep, did you forget to turn the hydrowave off again? Oh, it looks like I did. Don't worry, I got it. Thanks, bud. Creep! Sorry, guys. He never remembers. Give it up, Creep. What are you doing, dude? They're keepers. We've got a bit of wind, but this little pocket right here is protected, so I'm going to go ahead and hit this water willow. I made a switch to a white chatterbait, the crappie color with a different trailer on it, because there's there's much less cover. Well, there's not it's not less cover, but it's again another little one. But we're getting bites. 
um, there's less cover like the grass like the water willow but there's also a lot more noise with the wind in the water and everything so I threw the, the green pumpkin one around the point for a bit and it didn't uh, produce any strikes so I'm just thinking that they're really keyed into shad right now that one I pitched out along this riprap here and drug it across the top of a rock and then killed it and let it fall and I saw the flash so that's four in a couple hours I've got an overrun I got to clear out but I'll do it after but there's a lot of you know nothing banks as far as as far as the water willow and things like that so I wanted to kind of cover water a little bit faster and I got a strike we'll take it
Behind the Gadsden Mall at James D. Martin Wildlife Park, you can fish from shore, you can ride the trails, walk the trails, you can spend a bunch of time around Lake Gadsden and downtown. One of the many things that we have here in the city that allows you to enjoy nature, spend time with your family, maybe even catch a bass or two. Nakaluna Falls is another popular Gadsden area tourism spot. The legend has it that Princess Nakalula's father, who was the chief of her tribe, would not allow her to marry the man of her dreams, but instead marry a man from a neighboring tribe. So on the night of her wedding, she threw herself off of the falls to her death, and her father named the falls after her. The Gadsden area also has recreational trails, like the Black Creek Trail here at Nakalula Falls. Hiking, walking, trail riding, mountain biking, all of this done right here at Black Creek Trail. We're coming back into this little pocket where we came before, you'll recognize it. And I got a bite right there. And I figured to try to get a fifth one, since that was the only movement I got in this whole pocket back here. I'm going to give it a try again. See if uh, Oh Little is home. there. No está aquí. So basically, basically what we've done is we've made laps around two pockets. One's a smaller one, one's a much bigger one. This one's shallower and uh, we didn't get any response really except at the little mouths of these little pockets. We don't have time to go down the other side. I think there might be some uh, other opportunities over there. But we put a little something together today. Water temperature. Um, no. I don't really have water temperature on this one. I got to figure that one out. A little bit more setup work to do. But our water temp is 71.8. Oh, there it is. 
it was hidden in some noise. Um, 71.8 degree water. So, you know, they were fairly shallow. The water's fairly dirty. You can see down, a, you know, foot and a half or so. But uh, we figured out something that would trigger them, and that was when I made the switch to the actual Rage Craw itself. I think it had a little bit wider action on the swim jig here on the Davis Davis swim jig. This is a 3 8 ounce size. Anyway, um, we'll bring you more of these things as we kind of try to figure out what it is we're doing. Thanks for tuning in to Advanced Angler on our uh, guinea pig project on the water with Advanced Angler. <laughs>